Well good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing well. It's that time of the year again on the farm where the hedges need trimming. So Ted turned up yesterday, he's done a day's worth and he's just over there currently doing the ones in the middle. So go and catch up with him and have a little look. So what happens is that he comes along and cuts one side then he'll go up and cut the other one and then he'll come along and cut the top so um, he's just started on that now and then he'll come back up and give it um, another cut too so it'll be shorter than it is now. It's just a thing that happens every year, an annual hedge cut otherwise the hedges get too big and, and, uh, and a little bit gnarly. Keep it nice and tidy. And then you get a nice square looking hedge like that. So we call this Barbary, or this is a Barbary hedge, and it is spiky. So you can see there's little spikes on it. And usually at this time of the year, you do tend to sort of get a few flat tires on the, on the motorbikes too.
just finishing up here, I think. I might go and have a look, but there's hedges over that way. I don't know if he's done them. And then once he's done all that, he usually goes down to my house down there and finishes off the rest of the farm. I am planning to sort of take this long hedge out in the next couple of years so I can re-fence all these paddocks through here. Just sort of run them that way. I was already in and made a start down here, so there's only really this hedge along here and the one on the boundary over there, which you can't do the top because I think it's too tall. So that'll pretty much clean this side of the farm up. And then yeah, there's just a little bit like over there along the drain there and then just a little bit over there. So we'll be done in half a day probably. I did also ring up this morning to book these paddocks to get drilled. So I'm going to put an annual in here. Uh, the one over there and the other maize paddock there and then that paddock there is going to go into a perennial which means a permanent pasture um, but there's no rain in the forecast unfortunately so there's no real rush to get it in the ground maybe what's today Wednesday so the end of next week I've sort of booked it in for um, you just put it in and wait for the rain I guess but it's kind of good too because we have booked the trench room which was supposed to be coming today I'm not sure if it is or not haven't heard anything so maybe it's tomorrow or the next day uh, and what I'm going to do is run a water line from that trough down there and there wasn't a trough at the top of this paddock which is where the gate is so we're going to put a trough um, up there so the cows can get to it from this paddock and the paddock over there uh, and there's a few other little places that I'm putting water lines into a couple of new troughs here and there I did order three new ones and the size that I usually get there was like a two month wait on them pretty crazy eh so what I had to do was go to the next size up and there's a few of them available so they haven't been delivered yet, hopefully in the next week they sort of get dropped off, I don't know. They're only coming from down the road but they're pretty busy so whenever they can do it I guess. Well guys, jump forward a few days and I'm just back here in this paddock where we're going to put these water lines in. So. Um, we haven't had the trencher here this week, it is because um, the people that we use in town that has the trencher, Cubic, they have had COVID in the outfit, so they've um, people have had to go home and isolate or self-isolate for I think it's like 7 or 10 days, so they just haven't had many staff there um, and they just haven't had someone there to be able to drive the trencher. So um, currently Dad's bringing over Morgan, Morgan's going to do the trenching next week for us, um, but hey we're just going to bring him over, show where we want the water lines and then he can come and do it because dad's actually going away on holiday today so um, I'm not going to have a lot of time during the day next week just with all the feeding out and stuff I'm doing um, so we're just going to show you where we want them and um, he can come and do it whenever he's whenever he's free or available so what we're going to do is tee into this line here there's a water line that comes down from that trough goes through the drain here into here I need to bring the prongs over the forks and just lift it up and prop this trough up so it's a little bit more level and what I'm going to do is start the water line or tee into here and then go straight up the paddock through to where Dad uh, and Morgan are over there at the top there. Oh, I wasn't real keen to do it this way. There's a, like a bigger water line over on top of that hill, so come like straight through there. Um, Dad didn't want to, so <laughs> yeah, we're going to do it his way this time. And I'm finally going to put a trough in this paddock. So the actual trough at the moment's over there. I've got to fence it in half real weird. So this is going to be easy, I'm going to put it down there by that rock down there. It's a pretty easy one though because there's the water line there just lying on top of the ground and just trench it straight, oh it'll be a bit, bit tough getting it through these roots so it might just be a bit shallow through here but yeah just trench it down somewhere there and then just sit it over there by the gate, be nice. There's a few other little lines that we're going to also trench in as well and sort of fix up um, but those are the two main ones so we'll see you Monday.
Well, it's Monday morning and it was perfect timing because the troughs have come this morning. Morgan's over there at the moment trenching. I didn't realize that they were the ones with the ballcock covers. Oh, actually, the, all the covers are in, the lids, I mean, are in here. So the cows can't sort of knock the arms off the ballcocks. Works pretty well. Uh, here, they get put in here. That's fine. Big troughs, though. I did manage to move that trough, it was over there. I just put a chain around it and pulled it and it seemed to work all right. Nice and deep so the plough won't hit it next year. It's a good idea, now we push the trough back over it. And that's how you put water lines in, nice and deep. Just start it on the next line now that will tee off. Make it a bit easier. that junction's all done, I've got a tee over there, um, I'll whack this in and I just need to get one for here. Um, kind of defeats the purpose I guess, like trenching these lines in when that one's not, but uh, I don't know, at least it's done. You can always do that main line another time, it's really only from there up to the tank up there, so it's not too bad. That one's all done, so just got one more to go. The paddock that's over there, and then we'll start running some pipe. I reckon that'll be through it now. Hopefully. No, not quite. Pretty rude heat. It's quite good that I'm putting water lines in too because at least I'll know where they are. If Dad wasn't around, things would be impossible because he pretty much knows where everything is, but I have absolutely no idea. He's put a lot on himself. Um, but then we also have old galve stuff that popped in with sort of like a moldboard plough and yeah, I don't know where all that is. So it does make things tricky at times, but at least I'll be able to pass this on to the next generation, hopefully. We don't have too many rocks on the farm, like it's pretty clean soil, not very stony. But there is this big one here, so I'm hoping that it's the only one, just that one massive big boulder and there's not too much other rocks through here. Soon find out. Seems to be going alright, it's probably from the Taupo eruption that rock. Easy as.
Well, they're all done. They've all covered over the water lines, put the pipes in. They obviously leave a bit sticking out so I can fit the troughs. And they also don't cover like right in here because it gives me a little bit of movement um, for trying to get the end on the trough there. So that's perfect. Morgan was telling me though that that trench does about 300 metres um, an hour depending on the country. So good country like this, it probably does that. Um, and they've just got a brand new one. So they've got a new Kubota that has got a turbo. I think it's the same size as that one. It's just turbo, so it's got a little bit more horsepower. And on the same sort of country, they can get up to like 800 metres. So it must be uh, must be way grunt here, go better. But that'll pretty much do it for the trenching. This year, I don't think we've really got any more. Um, it'll sort of depend on the paddocks we pick next year for the maze, if we want to put any new troughs in or develop any new sort of paddocks. Just got to fit the troughs now. Which won't be today though, because I need to get some lifting chains and they lock into these lug nuts here. And that's how you lift the trough up. I don't think I can lift these up with the pallet forks um, with the tractor. I just think they're a little bit too heavy at the front and doesn't quite lift them up. I could try. Which is just as easy to get the lifting chains, they're only just down the road there at Bowers so you just ring them up and when they're available go and pick them up and, and use them for a couple of hours and then drop them back. I might even wait till Dad gets back and um, he can help me sort of do it, be a little bit easier with two of us so. So yeah, but I hope you enjoyed today's video guys, if you did give it a thumbs up that'd be awesome, apart from that, see you next time.